Hi everybody, this is Leslie Peterson. <clears throat> I'm the uh, Alberta biologist with Trout Unlimited Canada. And today we're trying something new. We're doing a uh, Ask Me Anything and uh, the topic today is fish rescue. So if you have uh, any questions about fish rescue, I'll be answering those for about 10 minutes or so. And um, yeah, so you can, um, I think you can comment here and um, ask your questions. I have a few questions that a few people have um, asked in advance, so I'll go through those. Um, but yeah, so Fish Rescue is a project that we do every year in the fall. Uh, we've been doing it for about 20 years and um, uh, yeah, it's a great project. We The goal of it is to rescue fish from irrigation canals in southern Alberta. So um, we have fish that get trained, it, trapped in these canals. They the canals divert water from the river systems, um, so they have big giant gates in the river and the water um, goes through these gates in the summertime during the irrigation season. And unfortunately, most of the structures don't have any um, screens or things to prevent fish from getting in the canals, so uh, fish get in the canals as well. Um, once the fish are in the canals, they don't have any way of getting back to their river system or the reservoir that they came from. so they're essentially lost to the system. Uh, some of them might survive in the canal. Um, some of them uh, might make it down to ponds or reservoirs further downstream, um, but generally we consider them lost um, because they're, they're no longer part of the breeding population that they would be in in a fluvial or river system. So yeah, um, somebody, uh, um, somebody had asked me, Kyle from Southern Alberta asked um, where he can find information on the fish sizes and species that are in the canals. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do that. One, um, every year when we do the rescue, we collect information on all the fish that are captured. So the number of fish, the different species and sizes, and um, um, a report so that's always available if anyone's interested um, it's usually done by around Christmas time every year or January um, so you know you can contact us we can send you the report and the other way of finding information is just by um, going on the provincial database so there's a database called FWIMIS which is the fish and wildlife management information system so because we collect a we have a permit to do the rescue from the province um, we um, send all of the information on the catch data to the province. So that's available for uh, all scientific um, collections across the province. So if you're ever wanting to know what's in um, what we've caught in a canal or anybody has caught in any creek or river in the province ever, um, or I guess in recent history, um, that's all available online through the FWIMIS uh, database. So you can check that out online it's free and it's available so um, but I would note that what we catch in the canal is just representative of that year and it's only what we catch it's not necessarily fish that live there because um, they're not really meant to be there um, Nicola asked uh, when we look for volunteers for the Carslin rescue so it's a really good question um, the project is dependent on volunteers we have uh, hundreds of volunteers that come out every year to help with the rescue and um, it's actually a pretty probably uh, the most popular volunteer project that we do um, super high demand and um, it's one of the few opportunities that people have in the province where you can go and see lots of different fish on any given day we might catch 10 or 12 species of fish um, from all the cool minnows and suckers to um, like big giant trout, um, so it's pretty neat. Um, everyone always loves burbot and sometimes we catch little pike which are super cute. Um, so it's a great way to handle fish and learn to measure them and sometimes we're able to get volunteers in the water to um, help with dip netting sometimes and um, carrying buckets, so sometimes it's pretty physical. Um, but there's always opportunity for someone to sit and you know record data um, or just measure fish. So um, how to volunteer. Um, we usually post social media every year um, around September, late September, sometimes even early October. The, um, the most popular rescue is the Carsland one, so it's just southeast of Calgary. Um, and uh, we usually sell out every year. So 
Um, I, I mean sell out, I mean it's free to come obviously, but um, we have to cap it at a certain number. So usually when we get to um, get to that within sometimes 24 or 48 hours, that many people have signed up. So what I encourage people to do is join our um, volunteer list. So if you've volunteered with us in the past, you'll be on our list and you'll get an email saying that volunteer registration is open. And then I would suggest if you're interested, and especially in the Carsland Rescue, that you sign up immediately and um, lock in your space. Otherwise, it will sell out for sure. Um, but if you're willing to travel a little bit, you can go down to um, some of the other canals near Fort McLeod, um, Granham, and um, uh, Pincher Creek area. So it's, you know, different places that people get to see and volunteer. Um, but yeah, so social media and definitely get on our volunteer list. So if you've never volunteered with us before, if you're a member, you should get the emails. Um, you can join online, uh, tucanada.org, or you can um, phone us. You can join that way. Um, you can also just join our volunteer list. Um, on our website, we have a, um, a place where you can sign up to volunteer. There's a volunteer questionnaire. Um, fill that out and then you'll get in our volunteer list. Um, my niece, Aubrey, who I think is watching, has a question. She wanted to know what the biggest fish we've ever caught is. And um, we have uh, data here that I think the biggest fish we've ever caught, oh, I have the wrong spreadsheet open. I think it was a bull trout actually. And I think it was from the Lethbridge Northern Headworks Canal. And let's see, how big was that guy? Seven hundred and oh, seven hundred and eighty-one millimeters. That was a brown trout, actually, from the Waterton Belly. Actually, I think that was um, just in two thousand eighteen. So, um, seven hundred and eighty-one millimeters, which is how fisheries biologists tend to measure fish in millimeters, not inches. That is um, more than two feet long. Um, so, yeah, it's a big, it's a big one. Um, people always get excited about the big fish. Um, of course, it's it's exciting, um, but tons and tons of fish. Um, oh, hi, Lindsay. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes people want to know, um, you know, if we catch any rare fish. Um, it was kind of exciting. Last year, we caught a uh, tiger trout, which is pretty weird. So, a tiger trout is a hybrid between a um, brook trout and a brown trout. So Typically, you would see tiger trout raised in a hatchery for stocking program for recreational fishing. Um, but this one we caught in the Lethbridge Northern Headworks Canal. So it's a canal that diverts water from the Old Man River. And um, this was just a little guy. I think he was like uh, less than 20 centimeters, I, I think. And um, um, little tiger trout. So I'm not really sure where it came from. Um, but it was there and it was actually the second time we ever caught a tiger trout we caught one in the same canal around the same location um around or nine or something like that um yeah there are sometimes other weird things hey brian we caught um lots of uh yellow perch this year in the um canal on the um, bow river in calgary so that was a weird one um it's kind of interesting that Fish Rescue gives us an opportunity to um, participate sometimes in uh, academic studies as well. So we've had um, opportunities where we have grad students or um, other research students come out if they're interested in collecting tissue samples or information uh, on other fish, um, whatever species they're looking at. So um, the, over the years, the project's been a really great opportunity for us to partner with some of these uh, academic institutions. Um, have you been finding a lot of Prussian carp showing up in the canals? Good question. Um, so we've only caught Prussian carp a couple of times and that was only in the um, uh, Carsland Canal. So the Carsland Canal diverts water from the bow um, just near the hamlet of Carsland, southeast of the city. Um, and we caught a couple, maybe like a couple of pr Prussian carp last year and we caught a bunch this year too. I think there was like a hundred and um, I don't know, 130 or something like that. Uh, actually, yeah, the biggest one was 165 millimeters. 
Um, they were all around 45 kilometers downstream of the diversion. So we've never caught them at like near the head gates near the river. They're all, they were all quite a ways down the canal. So it's kind of weird and a lot of them were pretty battered up and um, we euthanized them. Obviously we were not permitted to release those back into the river. Um, so yeah, only in the last couple of years have we caught Prussian carp. Um, yeah, does anyone else, any other questions? You can comment right here and I will answer your question. And if I can't answer it, I'll try and find the information and can get back to you another time. Um, yeah, what else is neat? Mm. We, um, yeah, sometimes, um, there's one of the canals we've done actually, is people ask about fish screens. Um, so one of the canals we did um, a long time, uh, the Mountain View Levitt Etna Canal, so that's down near the US border, diverts water, water from the Belly River. Um, actually a screen was put up there, I don't, I'm not sure, probably over 20 years ago or close to 20 years ago. And um, it's just a series of vertical bars to prevent bull trout from getting trapped in the canal. So that's kind of a neat story um, where the rescue, I think, maybe helped to prompt some interest mm -hmm. in putting up, uh, putting up a fish screen. Um, and also just in the last couple of years, another screen was put up on the women's coulee diversion. So um, the women's coulee diverts water from the Highwood River near High River. And we have caught bull trout and cutthroat trout and mountain whitefish, so those are all native species. Um, we've caught those fish in that canal. And um, just in the last couple of years, the, the diversion was re rebuilt and um, piped and screened. So that's another really great success story um, for, you know, the fish rescue, I guess. Um, oh, Allison, uh, Allie asked what my favorite fish is. Oh, this is always such a hard question. Um, I mean, um, I don't know. There's so many really cool ones. Um, bourbon are always really neat. They're so unique because, uh, you know, they feel really cool and they try and swim backwards away from you. So they're really neat to um, catch electro fishing. Um, and, it, and everyone gets really excited about burbot too. And they can, you know, we catch little guys that are really small and sometimes humongous. Uh, so they're really cool and they have this big barbel. So it's like a big, you know, whisker under their chin kind of thing that um, they use as a sensory organ. So they're really neat. Um, <clears throat> um, what else? I, I mean, obviously I love bull trout because they're Alberta's provincial fish. They're native to the province. Um, they're uh, threatened species, um, top predator, really cool fish. Um, we always get really excited when we catch bull trout. So um, that's for sure one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, what else, what, what my other favorites? I mean, Brooks Dickelback are really neat because they have little stickles on their spines. So they um, they have these little, little spines um, and kids really like catching them and looking at them and they have a little upturned mouth, um, so they're pretty cute. Um, yeah, so I guess those would be my favorites. Uh, yeah, what, what else? Any other questions? I think we'll probably wrap it up pretty soon. Um, I think there was, was there any other questions? I don't think so. So, so everyone for joining, um, and please comment if you have any suggestions for other videos, if you have other um, questions that you want us to answer, um, whether it's about our projects or the tools we use or um, the type of work we do, um, comment and um, let us know. You know, we'd probably be doing more of these Facebook Live videos while we're all stuck inside during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, most commonly caught trout species during the rescue. Uh, oh, let's see, I should have that information right here. Um, uh, well, it's not a trout, but we like a salmonid, we catch a lot of um, mountain whitefish. So over the history of the rescue, I would say mountain whitefish is the most frequently caught salmonid fish. Um, in the last couple of years, I feel like we haven't caught as many, um, but there's been changes to techniques and methods that we've used since the very beginning. Um, and, but yeah, as far as like the trout, I would say, I don't know, brown trout or, or rainbow trout. Um, we catch a fair amount of those different sizes, different places, but we catch them everywhere. Um, yeah, so anyway, 
thanks again. Um, again, let us know if you have other questions because we'll do this again about some other projects and stuff like that. So um, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye.